Okay, so we have our tables set up, but they're all empty. That makes designing and developing a front end for our application a little tough since we have no data to display. We could go into these tables and individually add in test items, but that would take up a lot of time. The better way is to utilize Laravel's factories to populate them for us. Laravel provides one factory for us by default, the user factory. Opening it up, we can see there's a protected model attribute that associates the model class used when running this factory. Then there's a definition method. This returns an array of key value pairs, the keys corresponding to the columns in the database associated with this model's data attributes. The values are what is used to populate a row of the database when the factory is ran. In the first two of these, the name and email address, we're using the built-in factory object to generate a fake name and email address for each model created. You could hard code in values here as well, like what's done with the password, or use any method or combination of methods to create the values that you'd like. The second part of this is the database seeder class, also added in by default to new Laravel applications. This is what actually generates and stores the seeded data when the artisan dbseed command is ran. Here we can use our factory classes to determine how many models we want to generate and store them in our database. Let's try out that user factory. Opening up the terminal, we can run artisan db seed, and if everything went through successfully, we should see this database seeding completed successfully message. How do we know it ran? Well, let's check the database. Opening up our users table, we can see that we now have 10 users generated, each one with a unique name and email address. So now to continue this, let's create factories for our other models. We could just copy the user factory class, but Artisan has this handy make factory command. You just have to pass in the name, usually formatted as model factory, so in our case, tag factory. Then using this model flag, we can pass in the actual model name, and Artisan will pre-fill in some attributes for us in the factory class file. All right, let's open up our new tag factory. So we can see that we have the tag class added in here for us, and our definition is returning a blank array. Remembering back to our migrations, our tags table has two attributes that need to be filled in, a name and a slug. Just like when you create models normally in Laravel, we don't need to specify the ID or the timestamp columns since those are going to be auto-generated. Now I want both the name and the slug to be the same value, just with different formatting. So I'm going to create the tag name as a variable called name and use this faker word. Let's wrap it in UC words to capitalize it as well. Then we can pass that value into the name attribute. And for the slug, we can wrap that value in Laravel's str slug helper, which will generate a slug from that string. Okay, save this and let's head back to our database seeder class. To test this out, we just call app models tag factory and pass in the amount we want to generate. Let's do 10 again. And then create, which is the method that actually saves the generated data into our database. If we run artisan db seed again, and take a look at the database, our tags table now has 10 tags associated with it. Each one has the same name and slug value, just with different formatting. Let's keep this going and create another factory for our listing model. Artisan make factory, listing factory, model, listing. And open it up. Let's go down to the definition and start to determine what attributes we'll need to generate for this model. We need a title and a slug, just like the tags, a company, a location, a logo, is highlighted and is active, some content, 
an apply link, and I'm specifying the timestamp columns created at and updated at here. The reason being is that while these are generated by default, I want some variation in the listings so they're not all shown as being created at the exact same time. All right, so starting from the top, let's generate our data. For the title, we'll store that as a variable and build it off of this faker sentence. Using RAND, we can generate sentences of varying length between five and seven words, and use that variable to fill in the attribute for title and slug, which is wrapped in Laravel's str slug helper. Additionally though, I'm going to tack on a dash and a random four digit number at the end of this. While each title will probably be unique enough coming from Faker, there's no harm in being extra cautious for a database value that should be completely different. For company, we can use this Faker company. And for location, this Faker country. The logo is a little bit trickier. I specified this as a string in the database, and since I'm going to be storing all of my logo images in the exact same path, all I need is the file name of the image generated. Faker also lets us create image data fairly easily using this Faker image. Then in that method, we can pass in the storage path that we want to save it to. For this, I'm going to use the app's storage path, followed by app public. I'll discuss later why I chose this specific path, but then all of that gets wrapped in the base name method to save just the image file name that's created. For is highlighted, I want it to be random, but not exactly 50-50. Instead, maybe like 15 or 20% of listings. For that, what I like to do is create a random number, and then return the value of a comparison on that number. So a random value between 1 and 9, is it greater than 7? Then it's highlighted. Otherwise, it's not. Is active, we'll set all of these hard-coded to true. Content, let's skip that for now. Apply link just uses this faker URL. For our timestamps, let's create another variable since both of them I'd want to have the same value. This faker date time between, which as you might guess, generates a date time between two dates. Because this uses carbon, we can pass in some simple strings to generate those two dates. Our start will be a month before today, and our end is now. Let's update those attributes with our daytime variable and start working on our content section. This will also use a variable called content. And at first, it will contain a blank string. Using a basic for loop, I'm going to add to that variable a p element with the class mb4 and then some content with this faker sentences, passing in a random number of sentences between 5 and 10. The true passed in as a second argument returns those sentences as a single string instead of an array. Then I'll end the whole thing with a closing p tag. The reason that I'm doing this is that I want the content saved in the database as HTML. Later on, when someone creates a post, They'll be using Markdown, which will end up generating HTML. All right, that's our listing factory. Heading back to our database cedar class, we can use app models listing factory 10 create to generate 10 of them. And in the terminal, let's run artisan db seed. Once that completes, we'll open up our MySQL database and see what we have. Uh-oh, we got an error. Field user ID doesn't have a default value. Unlike the users and tags, which are isolated models that don't have any belongs to relationships, listings requires a user ID foreign key and can't be created without one. Now, because we already have 10 users in our database with IDs from 1 to 10, we could, in theory, just add a rand 110 call on the user ID attribute in our listing factory. However, that's not a solid way of doing things. If we wanted to generate more users, or if we had users whose primary keys were UUIDs or something besides the numbers 1 through 10, we'd have to constantly update the listing factory to accommodate those changes. 
Instead, what we can do is change up our database seeder to cascade through the related child models and generate their data as we seed each parent. That might sound confusing, but I'll break it down as I go. Let's start out with the user factory, and we'll pass in 20. Then we'll add on the create method, which generates those 20 users and saves them in the database. Now that create method returns back a collection of eloquent model objects. So we can use the each method to step over each one of them, passing in a closure function where we have access to the individual user object. We can then call the listing factory method and generate a number of listings associated with each user. For some variability, let's use rand and generate anywhere between one and four listings per user. Then we use the create method, but this time we're going to add an argument to it, an array. In this array, we can pass in values that either add to or override what's in the definition array in our factory class. So for our listing, we need a user ID, and that's just the ID attribute of the user object. So let's save this, open up our console, and run artisan db seed. Okay, that looks like it went through successfully. If we open up our database, we can see that we have multiple listings, each one with a user ID and the data that we generated for them. The last thing that we need to do is create and see the database with the tags. First, let's create them separately from the users and listings. Tags equals tag factory, and we'll create and save 10 of them. Now all we have to do is tack on the same each method that we use to step over the users and go through each listing created. For each of the listings, we can use the listing eloquent object and call the related tags method with attach. Attach is used in many-to-many -many relationships and expects either an array of eloquent objects or just an array of model IDs. It then uses those to populate the pivot table associating the two models together. I think setting two different tags for each listing seems fair, so to accomplish that, all I have to do is use the eloquent method random on the tags collection and pass in how many I want to pick out, two. I'll have to pass in the tags collection with a use statement to both of those closures so it's available. And now I'm going to clear up my database of the test data that we had so far, then run artisan dbc again to repopulate everything that we've just specified. Okay, that went through successfully, and if we open up our database, we can see that we have listings again, and we have tags, and most importantly, we have associations between those two models as shown in the listing tag pivot table. Our database structure is all set up and seeded with plenty of usable test data. Now let's move on to installing and setting up some package dependencies that we'll need for our application.